Um, I never went to school for, for writing. I went to school for theater um, and I got my BFA in acting, but, uh, and, and uh, I, so I didn't like spend my whole time in college just writing, just writing, just writing. Um, uh, I had to kind of teach myself the process. So, you know, I, I use that. Have you, have you read that uh, book? Yeah. So, um, and then, you know, then I also got into uh, uh, Robert McKee's book and then I also got into uh, Save the Cat. So what that does is gives me just kind of a structure. Um, I want to know that there is uh, just that structure of to follow along so if i want to break it and 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 do something different with it but at least i know um uh where the beginning middle and end is um and what i'll do is i have the i do post-its and i will put post-its for each scene um i will put uh uh what the conflict is what the characters are how this uh you know what scene in what act it is. And I'll use different colors for each act. Um, I'll put where the, all the plot points are and I'll just try to create the bones of it. I'll create the play without writing the play. And then uh, I'll look at it for a while, collect them uh, and then just kind of go through. And if it bleeds into another thing, I'll, you know, uh, that's, uh, or if, it, if it, the structure changes a bit, then that's fine. I just wanted to get the bones in there. And then I, then I take whatever crap I write and then I step away and then I'll do it again. But knowing what I've written and seeing what I have to throw. You know, so I basically just kind of write and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and then it becomes a play. This is different. Fakespeare was different. Fakespeare was me uh, in pandemic brain. Fakespeare was me um, being, <clears throat> uh, not being motivated to do a damn thing uh, for months. Um, I learned, uh, oh, I got into uh, 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 bartending I got into learning how to make drinks. That was my pandemic hobby. Um, and then um, my publisher was like, hey, can you write something? Uh, we're looking for, for things. We're looking for short things that people can do online. And uh, I threw away all of that boring ass technique I told you about and uh, I just wanted to be ridiculous and go back to my sketch roots. Um, and at the same time, I was getting uh, Sacred Fools asking, hey, do you have something? I'm like, well, two birds with one stone. And uh, that's when I wrote Shakespeare. Hi, this is Jamie Robledo. Uh, I am the writer of Shakespeare. And if you wanna know more about my play and the Together LA Festival, watch this video. Uh, Shakespeare is, uh, you know, uh, is in the style of a Zoom performance. So um, a lot of it is really good. A, a lot of it is really bad. Um, and I don't know. I know it's a thing we have to do in the short term. And I don't know how good, I mean, how uh, smart it is to like invest so much time in getting good in a process and a medium that we're gonna kind of discard in a couple years. Like I don't foresee myself being the king of Zoom theater or wanting to vie for that. Uh, I think it has its place. Um, so I think for me, um, you know, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, write about the some of the glorious and ridiculous stuff of um, of of this Zoom medium we have now, um, and how it works and it doesn't work, 
and overlay this Shakespearean kind of thing on top of it. And so what I did was uh, I wrote this show about um, this community theater doing Shakespeare, but they're not good at it. They're well-intentioned. Probably they didn't memorize anything, but they know that Lady Macbeth has a dagger. You know, Shakespeare, Macbeth has a dagger and she has, Lady Macbeth has blood on her hands. Hamlet wants to kill himself. Uh, there's a chorus and, and he lays the scene. So we have that, we know that about these people, but they don't know anything else. And uh, there is this, uh, so they go through these motions of doing real Shakespeare, but faking it. And then there is this one guy, Pete, who just doesn't, you know, who is not really paying attention. He's part of the troupe. Um, he kind of blows it off. And as all these worlds collide with these different characters, he kind of blows the, blows the performance. Um, and when he's put on the spot to perform, this guy you think that is not, um, uh, who isn't invested like these actors, these performers are actually understands uh, what, the true meaning of this work is what the language is, what Shakespeare is, and he nails it um, in a kind of a reversal. And he uses uh, uh, all the world's a stage. It's kind of cliche, but he's amazing at it. And then end scene. And so that's kind of, that's the arc of the show. And I don't mind spoiling it for you because it's pretty fun. I want the audience to have a fun time and to laugh at the kind of the self-seriousness of themselves as actors or performers or the self-seriousness of the, the of theater, but also, you know, um, the, a bit of, you know, take, take into consideration about the, the, you know, the, the, actually the importance of, of the work of, of Shakespeare and the, just what we do. Um, uh, you know, it's, I put on that it's, this play is stupid. This play is, and honestly, it's stupid. It's dumb. You're going to have a good time. Uh, but there's a little in there for you to kind of walk away with. Um, I didn't want to, the, when I, when this all this started, uh, when we went into lockdown, and uh, when it's like, well, my livelihood is gone for a bit. Um, you know, one thing I didn't want to do was create stuff that lived in this COVID world. I didn't want things to be about COVID that I wrote. I didn't want to have an audience like, you know, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want audiences to have to remember why they're staring at a box on their screen with actors in their own little boxes. Um, I didn't want, I didn't want to, I don't want to watch anything set in coronavirus times, but you can't really escape this format and why we're watching. You're not going to be transported. A lot of what I do is cinematic as a writer and a director. Um, but you know, there's only so much you can do in this format. So I wanted to, I want people to like, uh, I want people to just kind of understand, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing theater on Zoom and it's, it's, it's stupid, it's dumb, it's necessary for the time and just, I want it to be enjoyable for them. I didn't want them to see four people having fun, being silly, with a little seriousness underneath, but not really, you know, I want people to have fun, you know, because it's, you watch these things and it's so much, you, you're, you can only watch so much. You can't watch a two hour show on this. You can't watch a three hour show. You're, it, it, you're, you're, it, it flags, you know, because um, you're in a theater, you want to sit down, 
watch, uh, you watch play, you have intermission, go to the bathroom and you're home. You want to get your chips. You want to get a beer. You want to, you know, you know, pause and you can't do that. So I like this little bite-sized bit of silliness. I am looking forward to just seeing, <laughs> honestly, some seeing some of my friends again, doing the work that they love. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, names of theater companies that, cause I'm an ovation voter. And so I, I go around and watch other people's plays and, 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 you know, I, you know, you vote for awards and stuff, but you're actually just, I, I love just going and sitting down and, and, you know, getting their vibe. And uh, I miss that. I miss going around. I miss going to see uh, stuff at theater of note. I miss going, you know, celebration. I miss kind of the energies that they bring um, because everything's been so insular. And now, this is all of us. This is all of us saying we're still here. We're, you know, the, the, our companies are still, are still viable. It's still around LA theaters is, is not going anywhere. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to just kind of having a sense of community again. I wanted to uh, uh, give a shout out and to thank like everyone involved in, in this um uh, in, first of all, in the in the whole festival, but especially with um, uh, with uh, Fake Spear and Sacred Fools, and you know uh, the artistic directors who decided to run with my goofy ass show, uh, which is uh, they're 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 great. Um, uh, the the actors are amazing in it. Uh, they're all powerhouses. They're all freaking fun as hell. Um, uh, Therese Olson, Guy Picot, uh, Scott Leggett, Amir Levy. Um, uh, I think the, uh, uh, Hiram Sanchez is the director and he's, he's young and he's got, he's got a lot of energy and a lot of ideas and he's, he's going to create something super fun and ridiculous as ridiculous as my words. And then, uh, uh, and then David Mays, who is uh, the producer of it. And, you know, this guy has to go and he's got to like take a COVID test and then he's got to go around and pick up equipment and he's got to drive these equipment to everyone in the cast. So they have to pick it up. And he's got, you know, there's a lot of legwork that he had to do um, in this new format that nobody understands quite yet uh, how to, work and the this festival works in an unusual way they have their own process that we have we had to learn uh in order to produce this so everyone getting on board doing like saturday 9 a.m rehearsals and kind of giving up a lot of time to this i'm really i'm really stoked uh that uh, about the energy and the in ingenuity of, of, of this company and, and everyone involved in the production. Hi, I am Jamie Robledo. I am with Sacred Fools. I wrote Shakespeare. And if you enjoyed this conversation and all of my ramblings about theater and the play, uh, I encourage you to go to the Together LA Festival and watch some more awesome stuff.